Good morning everyone, welcome to another vlog here on the World of Coasters. Today we are on day four of our mega trip. And so quick. Yeah, I know, our second day at Alton Towers. We were here yesterday, uh, however we didn't vlog it because we didn't turn up to about half eleven. Uh, however, today it's 10 a.m. and we're in the park. Uh, heading over to Smiler, obviously uh, this time of year is Oktoberfest, so they've got all the festival tents up over on the main gre uh, green where you can get an absolutely banging breakfast for eight quid. Um, yeah, not the cheapest, but there's no um, Winter Wonderland this year, so we treated ourselves yesterday, didn't we? It opens from two till seven. Yes, so park hours are ten till six today. However, like Louise said, they're doing live entertainment on the green over there until 7 p.m. Um, which we watched a little bit yesterday, but I don't think we're going to be staying for that tonight because we're heading over to Fantasy Island tonight, which is all the way over in Skegness. So, uh, yeah, but um, crowd level should be quite low. Yesterday it was busier than normal for a September. Like, normally I expect it to be like three cons. Um, but it was, you know, you waited about 45 minutes for maybe like Smiler and uh, Oblivion and all that. Uh, but to be honest, it's not as busy as it was back in July when we came here. Yeah, that was. Um, so since we last been here as well, they've made a few changes to their like one-way systems and markings on the ground, which is good to see. I'll show you them as and when we see them. Um, but now they've actually got one ways in, in, in like place like around um, Katanga Canyon. You have to go back through under the Wicker Man, which I didn't show you last time, so I have to show you that today. Like I said, it's 10 o'clock on the nose. Um, Louise can probably show you. Show me, show them the free star mark. We got our freestyle. I'm literally holding the camera so weirdly right now. So we're going to be getting our freestyle drinks today. Um, so that normally is uh, seven pounds to reactivate. Annual pass discount, five pound sixty. Not too bad. Unlimited refills all day. And me and Louise will just share that throughout the day. So anyway, let's see you over by Smile. I hope you won't be too long. This is the first time you've been on Smile on camera. On the, on the vlog. In July, I said Louise was going to go on it. She said she would try it, but not on the vlog day. Um, she did go on it the other time, but we needed the toilet so badly in the queue, didn't we? That was unreal. I'm kind of scared. I don't want day travel in that queue. Well, I don't think it's going to be as busy. We might have a half hour queue. So you can obviously hear they've got a totally new score for the whole resort over Oktoberfest. Uh, a lot of their fan favourite rides, including the Smiler, has a Oktoberfest uh, Umpa Band soundtrack. No, because we didn't go. Yeah, we didn't. Well, I don't know whether they're playing it in the station, but another thing you'll notice as well, they've got more signage, so obviously keep left. Uh, they had the chevrons, but not these signs last time, which is good to see. Hopefully, it won't be too bad today, social distancing. you can hear they're actually playing the original soundtrack so maybe they're only playing the Bavarian soundtrack in the ride station or queue line uh, but last time we came on this ride it was queuing all through the extension along here um, which it isn't today so we waited about an hour from here so hopefully we should be on it within 20 minutes one thing I also forgot to mention today at 11.30 we booked ourselves into the Alton Towers dungeon Social Definitely. Up in your yeah. So uh, obviously we pre-booked that as five pounds for the two of us, two pound fifty. It's a deal they're doing at the moment when you're on resort. Um, so that should be very interesting to do and see. Uh, plus we haven't had any dungeon action this year, so no, we, we need to get in a dungeon. Anyway, into the cure of the smile. Let's see how long it is. Right, so we made it through the extension queue and we're now in the main area of the ride and I've just said to Louise, it's not queuing in any of this. It looks like we're going to be queuing maybe from the inside section. Um, but there's only going to be maybe five or, ten, uh, five or ten minutes. I do love the views you get from down here. You know what I love? I just love everything around Yeah, it's, it's so crazy. Like, there's no coaster in the world that packs as much uh, coaster track per square feet as this one and it is really impressive to watch. Um, you know, even when the queue's long, this ride gives you something to look at your whole duration. Obviously, we've got the Marmalizer above us here. A uh, very impressive piece of theming. And uh, they've even themed the, uh, the Genie pickups to fit the Smiler theme. Uh, I haven't heard the Bavarian theme song yet, which is a little bit sad. Uh, but we'll see whether it's playing in the station. 
So obviously this is a major cattle pen, this cube. But last time we came on it, they've got the social distancing markers and look, Louise, it worked really well last time, didn't it? It was excellent. It was, like everyone seemed to pay attention to them. They were announcing constantly, because uh, of course there is no way of staying away from people, but they put the markings out and you can obviously see around all the corners. So the queue is from here, so it's maybe about 10 minutes if it's moving the way it is. They seem to have three or four trains running at the moment. And uh, as you can see, people are socially distancing very well in this queue. So we'll see you when we get off the Smiler. As I'm sure you know by now, we can't take you on the bike here at Alton Towers. So we'll see you when we get off. So we've just come off the smile of first ride of the day. Only like a 15 minute queue for that, if that. What do you think of that, Lee? That was your, oh my God. That was your second ride on it, but your, your first ride not needing the toilet. I feel is. like I was so distracted last time. I didn't care about the ride at all. I was literally, I thought I was going to faint. Didn't I, didn't I look like proper bad? Not at all. I was like, my hands were like this. Anyway, we've got an hour until our stop for the dungeon. So are we going to do Oblivion while we're here? Because yeah. I, I imagine it'd be walk on at the moment. Because uh, Oblivion is just across the way from here, so uh, straight on to the next ride of the day, guys. So one thing to mention, um, all of the rides now have these fences outside, so uh, they're actually enforcing social distancing a lot more this time. It has changed so much since July, like, oh they, my God. they seem to be leading by example here. They're really hot on it. I wonder whether they've maybe had a couple of inspections. Uh, because we found Chessington. We haven't been to Chessington since no. open. Next week, though, we're planning on going there, so we'll see how that's changed. Um, but yeah, in the queues, they're literally saying, hey guys, you in the red t-shirt, I, I can see you, why don't you want a marker? That was back in Smiler queue. Um, obviously, you've got the social distancing markers, but like I say, outside the uh, queues now, there are fences, so if the queue goes out the entrance, which I imagine over the summer holidays it was, um, it's able to hold them and keep them away. Um, over in Dark Forest, it was a bit of a problem with the food outlets, wasn't it? Do you remember? Oh, yeah. The kebab place. Uh, I have to show you there, they've actually fenced it off, so people aren't Please queuing in the pathway. And, and of course, you've got the announcement. Stay two meters apart. It's like the Hunger Games. I've not seen it, so I don't know. It really is. Anyway, it looks like it's going to be a walk on for Oblivion, so uh, we'll see you when we get off the ride. What was only a five minute queue for Oblivion? Um, we then had a little play around with the grabber machine, trying to win a poo bear. Lost five pounds. Lost five pounds, yeah, but I wasn't going to say that, but oh well. Um, anyway, uh, the time has just gone 11 o'clock now, so we were going to head over to 13 and uh, do that before our dungeon slot, but there's little to no point now because we got to be at our slot for um, the dungeons in 20 minutes. So uh, I kind of want to. Get there early. You've got to be, you're allowed there 10 minutes before your slot, I believe. Um, I'm really getting out of breath on this hill, so I'm going to wait till I get to the top before I fill you in on the rest. Right, thank you, uh, Gradual Slope. You uh, stopped me from vlogging. Uh, yeah, we're just going to mooch about for like 20 minutes before we go to the dungeons. 
Um, we want to see what they want to do, what they're doing for social distancing because normally they pack you in a group of about 20. Mm -hmm. And they like like to get in your face. And, and they, they select the they select you and take you in for like the torture chamber and the little yeah. doctor. So it'd be interesting to see How what they do, do there. That? Yeah. I imagine they have either staff or mannequins. Yeah. So we'll see, but obviously I won't be able to film on the dungeons, guys. So you're going to have to wait for a review of that when we get off. Uh, which for you would just be a snap of the fingers, but for us it's about an hour, I believe it is. They're about 45 minutes. They have the boat ride. Yeah, yes, they do. The old Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and Toyland tours ride. Anyway, we're just taking a stroll past the towers now. Which is also close. And uh, I've got to say, it's quieter than yesterday, isn't it, Lou? Bearing in mind it's 11 o'clock now, um, it's much quieter. I was saying to Louise yesterday, uh, it's more cloud coverage today, but it's meant to get as hot. I reckon a lot of people just pulled a sickie <laughs> after the weekend. Um, didn't, so didn't, the queues, queues must be much more bearable. So Hex, they've got the queue outside so that you don't actually queue indoors at all. The, uh, the zigzag bit is still in there, but you queue out here, which is why you've got all this fencing. So they, the groups are really restricted in Hex now. You literally have maybe like 10 groups per party and you have a doctor stand on in each room and that's where you stand. And then in the actual madhouse itself, they have like blotted off areas. Um, Louise is just jigging out to one of the um, Oktoberfest, Oktoberfest uh, soundtracks. Like I say, we didn't hear it on Smiler, did we? No, not at all. Uh, anyway, we're heading over to the dungeons now and we'll have a look, see if they've got anything different for 2020. So it's quarter past now and we're heading towards our slot on the dungeons, which actually takes us past what was meant to be new for 2020 this year, the uh, world of David Walliams, um, which has now actually got boarding up and signage saying new for 2021 over there, as you can see. You can just about make out the entrance sign. Um, so the entrance sign here, uh, surprisingly, just says Gangster Granny the Ride rather than like World of David Walliams, which I thought he would have said. Uh, but yeah, it looks like it's had a lot of money thrown in it, like all these buildings have been repainted and everything. And of course, the new ride is actually in this building here, uh, which used to be a like it was a scare maze, uh, like for the younger ones. Obviously, this was Cred Street uh, when I was growing up and Talbot Street. Um, but yeah, it's been totally rethemed and was meant to open this season. Um, but sadly not. Right, so we're going to be going into the dungeons in the next 10 minutes or so. So this is the normal route you take. So you've got the, the judge scene and then a, a rabbit, a white rabbit. Uh, which takes you onto the Black River, which is the old ride system for um, Toyland Tours and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Torture scene, which will change substantially because... They you, can't they have want... a member of the audience. Yeah, uh, and the boat ride they're going to have to separate. So it'll be interesting. I imagine there's going to be markers on the floor. Um, but yeah, I'm really interested to see what they're doing. That's the, this is one of the only reasons we're doing it. A, we haven't been to a Dungeons this year. And B, just want to see how they're doing the social distancing yeah. on it. Yeah, and it's only 2.50 each. Yeah, at the moment it's, um, it's, it's um, about six people in the queue, so it's going to be quite a small group. Uh, Louise was saying, yeah, it's 2.50. It's 2.50 for annual pass holders. Uh, for general public and admissions, it's £5 per group. Um, but £2.50, you can't really turn it down every couple of trips. Uh, it is good, and we do love a good dungeon. So What's we're going to. My favourite scene. Though? My favourite scene. I, I really like the boat ride because it's unique to this one. Yeah. That I really wish they took the subterra drop towers and put them in the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory my lifts. The plague doctor. But anyway, guys, I can't take you on here, of course. So we're going to have to just um, leave you at the door to the dungeons, and we'll see you when we get off. Let's have a terrible time. So just before we do go in, I'll show you the exterior because I'm going to have to put the camera away. Obviously, they've got exit only here and uh, the queue line is all outside now and uh, we should be going in. We could be we could be in a very small group, so we'll fill you in when we get off. Right, so 40 minutes have passed and we've just come off of the Alton Towers dungeons and I can happily say not only are they doing a brilliant job of all the social distancing requirements in there, uh, it was our best run through of that particular dungeon. Um, 
the groups they're doing the the maximum group size you're allowed is four per spot um, and four four groups per like the expedition let's say it's the 16 uh, people so yeah no more than 16 good. people we were in a, a, a group of 10 no eight people it was uh, yeah, all four groups of two the social distancing was absolutely amazing you know there was no point where i felt like i was too close to anyone apart uh, from me <laughs> obviously um, and obviously <laughs> because there's less people in the group they pay more attention to you um, we didn't get picked on we no, always we get picked on we didn't get picked well, on he shot me in the face <laughs> so that's it. But um, yeah, they've, they've done the social distancing very well. There are certain aspects that aren't there, like when you get off the boat of the Black River, uh, the soothsayer isn't there. They've got uh, the uh, like and head the, on a pole, haven't they, saying it? And they don't bring anyone from the audience up for the body parts scene. They do for the torture scene, though, but yeah. they can do that from a distance, so it's not really a problem. Um, I, I, I was very, very happy with that. Like, if you get a chance to do it, or you're like, oh, I'm worried about the social distancing. Um, it's you, true. It's really good. It's it is really good. Um, probably the only thing I could have said about improving it is sometimes the markers on the floor, because it was so dark, you couldn't see them. And they were like, stand in that corner, so where's the marker? Mm -hmm. um, but that's not a major issue. Obviously, you've got to wear a face mask when in the building, either a face mask or a face shield. If you don't wear it, or you wear it like this, they won't let you in. You have to wear it fully over your nose for the entire show. Uh, if you're not seen wearing it, they give you one warning and that's it, and then you're out. Um, but yeah, I'm very impressed with that. Like we also had a very active like group. Yeah, um, the guy. Oh my god, that this on the guy, last like proper lad. He kept like going, oh, I don't like it, like screaming. whimpering. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's now 11, uh, no, sorry, what's the time? Oh, it's uh, 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock on the night. So we're in there 40 minutes. We got in 10 minutes early because they were waiting for us. Yeah. Um, obviously, we weren't late. Um, but yeah, we're going to go do some more rides. I think we're going to do 13, then catch the sky ride down to the front of the park. So let's go into the dark forest. Right, so we've had a slight change of plan. Um, 13's advertising a 50 minute queue, which I don't really believe because all the other coasters in the park, including Smiler and Wickerman, are only at a 35 minute queue at the moment. Um, but we've decided, why it's, while it's so quiet down the front of the park, we're going to go over to um, Wickerman via the Skyride. Uh, Skyride had quite a long queue, but there's no rush for it now whatsoever. Um, and it's basically going to be a walk on. The good thing about this, the uh, sky ride at the moment, you get your whole gondola to yourself, which I, which I love. One other thing I'd recommend for the sky ride, if you want to actually get on it, the best places to get on are at the Ivor Inn station. Try not to board in the, in the Forbidden Valley station because uh, they don't really empty and obviously if there are people in the car, they can't put you in if there's room because of social distancing. Uh, but the queue for the sky ride is out here and they've got social distancing markers on the floor and should be on it within about five or ten minutes. Skyride station in, um, I did say Cloud Cuckoo Land, it isn't Cloud Cuckoo Land anymore, it's like in between lands. Uh, and we're going to be heading down to the front of the park, like I said. Um, we're on our own gondola in here. So, Lou, it's the closest thing to the skyline that you're going to get on. Disney, Sky, Disney Skyline. Oh my god, stop! We were meant to be going uh, Pop Century Resort. He keeps reminding me it's annoying. The Pop Century Resort obviously was on the Skyliner route, which was one of the reasons we booked that hotel, so we could take the Skyliner to Epcot and to Hollywood Studios. So we're now over the gardens at the moment, um, and from here you can actually see the pagoda, which was uh, re-themed, or refurbished rather, not re-themed, it's an original pagoda. Uh, from the gardens and I would like to go down there to film it but as you can see it's uh, quite a way down and we are both incredibly unfit when it comes to gentle incline. We did it yesterday. Uh, yeah kind of we went over to the uh, conservatories yesterday which is nowhere near the bottom uh, but yeah we should be at the front of the park in no time at all at this rate like uh, we're just coming to the Forbidden Valley station now so we'll see you when we get off of the sky ride. <laughs> So yeah, Wicker Command is queuing from uh, just over the back there, so probably about a 20 minute queue on that. It's going to be up next. 
again, you can see down here they've got all the extension cues ready now. And uh, down at Mutiny Bay, a whole one-way system, which uh, we'll show you when we get down there. So along here as we come to Mutiny Bay, if you turn left, there is a one-way system, so you keep to the left. Uh, we're going to be keeping this side, though, and going over towards the Wicker Man. Loving the Oktoberfest theming here, and I really like the logo. I love the pretzels. They've got the Wonder Bar open, which is a temporary bar, which is uh, for Oktoberfest at the moment. You can buy it up to four pints per sale. Um, and here are the, the prices, and you can buy yourself a reusable stein for a fiver. So here we are, coming to one of the refresh and refill stations. Also got segregation areas here to keep you away from queuing, because during the summer it was queuing just out into the middle here. So they tucked it all away, um, so I'm going to go fill up the up. So Wicker Man is advertising a 35 minute queue at the moment. I don't for a second believe we're going to be waiting 35 minutes. Probably closer to 20, um, but we'll let you know when we get off the ride. Uh, just enjoy some shots of the great GCI Woody that is Wicker Man. Just come off of the Wicker Man, only about a 15 20 minute queue for that, wasn't it? No one wasn't really counted. So, the plan now is we're going to head round towards Katanga Canyon, up to Jewel, Vin Valley, and then uh, make a decision probably on lunch and go from there. But a great ride. What time is it now? Oh, it's one o'clock already. Wow, the day's shooting by. Just snacking. Um, but yeah, I'm having a good day so far. Like, Wicker Man is running very fast at the moment. I'd probably say it's a little bit rough. Um, we were mid-train there, row six, and uh, that wasn't the best ride we'd had on it. So, um, yeah, I might give it a go later before we go, um, but we're gonna head over to Katanga Canyon now. Mutiny Bay is one of the one-way systems here. Probably the only thing I'd say about the one-way system in Mutiny Bay is we went through the toilets in here and came out around the side and there's no sign saying it's a one-way system. So some people are turning out the toilets and going around um, to the right when you're meant to come left. There are markings on the floor, um, but as you can probably see, there are some old ones which uh, can be a little bit misleading. So we've stopped off for a quick lunch now and uh, Louise and I are just having like, a smaller meal. It's huge, it well, is huge. Yeah, you know what I mean, we're not getting a full, because like, you can get this with chips. But, you know, these will go yeah. So I've got the Oktoberfest, um, yeah. what was it, the sausage roll. Uh, you get to choose your like sauce in it, so meat, mild, medium or hot. And it's just like a, a Bratwurst or a Frankwurst in there, I can't really tell. Um, that was $5.99, no avenue pass discount. When you got cheesy chips, it's a bad shot. Not melted um, on. Not melted on, which is a bit of a disappointment. But um, how much was that? £2.925. That's not bad, that's a pretty generous size of chips. So then anyway, we're going to eat this and then we're going to head over to Katanga Canyon. It's good to see in front of the Wicker Man, they've actually got some uh, street performers. 
the Bjorn, the people that um, own the Wicker Man or built the Wicker Man for their rituals are out the front doing their ritualistic stuff. So, good to see they're wearing face masks though. So we're going into Katanga Canyon now and this is where one of the biggest changes have been made to their one-way systems and keeping left. So originally you used to be able to go either way down this path and you can on this section here keep to the left and keep to the left. However they've now made it so going into Katanga Canyon on this left turn is one way. Um, you cannot go you cannot come back down this path. However the weird thing being you can turn right here, but keep in left. Um, so there's one way access here, and um, you can't come back here, as you can see from the sign here. From this point is one way. Hopefully later we'll come back through there, because that gives you some good shots of um, Wicker Man from underneath, which aren't normally open, except for on special events. Uh, but yeah, it's much better that they've made this one way, as it just gives more room. So to make sure this is enforced, they've actually got security along here, which makes sure that they, people aren't coming back down the one-way systems. Uh, we were going to do Congo River Rapids, we're going to give it a miss because it's got a reasonable queue. Probably only about 15, 20 minutes. But the runaway train over here is um, only advertising a zero-minute queue. So take that any day. Right, so the runaway train at the moment has a pretty long queue, like you see in all of these extensions. So uh, there's only about a 15 minute queue. We're going to head over to Jewel. Louise is just pointing out these new lights they've put up, which I imagine have been part of Oktoberfest, but I imagine they look really good at night. They, should, they could change the bulb colours, maybe. Well, well Oktoberfest is blue, but yeah, they could change them throughout the year, but it just uh, adds a bit more character to the pathways along here. Anyway, we've decided we're going to go on to Jewel now, as it's always a walk on Jewel, and then we're going to come back and do the runaway train. So we're in the haunted house now, or Jewel as it's called. I always refer to it as the haunted house, so that's what it was when I was growing up. Anyway, guys, you know the rules. Can't even take you on the dark night here, so we'll see you when we get off the Jewel. The haunted house strikes back. So we're heading back round towards uh, Katanga Canyon. Only downside of this one-way system is we've got to go all the way back to the Wicker Man to go back to um, the runaway train. Exercise, um, man. Yeah, exercise, and also it means we're going down the path that leads through the middle of Wicker Man, which last time I didn't show you. This path, like I said, is only open during special events and um, during the construction of um, Wicker Man. Uh, normally this path won't be open but they've done it so they can have this one-way system. Get some good shots of Katanga Canyon and the um, Congo River Rapids. Plus if you look in the right areas of the woodlands you can see some of the remnants of the flume. So for the eagle-eyed among us there is the old flume uh, or part of the old flume. This is kind of where the building was uh, where the drops went over one another and uh, yeah that's one of the old chutes going into it they're just obviously concrete they cost a lot to rip out so with this pathway being open you can see the top of the chain for uh wicker man which you realize isn't actually that tall it's a bit like nemesis because you're so far away from it, you don't really get a chance to see it um but it's probably only about 30 40 feet off the ground from here it's just how it makes use of the valley down below man's first drop including this amazing double down which uh, John Wardley put his nose in here apparently it wasn't meant to have this double down um, but John Wardley looked at the first drop and said no it needs a double down to add a bit of thrill to it so it was boring before then and then round here you've got the old viewing windows from when the ride was under construction uh, but yeah it gives you some views which you wouldn't normally be able to get uh, of the wicker man It's a nice warm day and as such there is a queue for the rapids. I wouldn't say it's 20 minutes, maybe about 10. So we 
we've just come off of the Congo River Rapids. It was spot on, 20 minute wait for that, and we're gonna go around to the rapid, uh, to the um, runaway train now, as it's not using its extension queue. So here we go, into the queue of the runaway train, not using the extension, should be on the next cycle on this one. So as you just saw from that previous shot there, uh, by the toilets around Jewel, um, there were some flume cars um, just sitting around doing nothing. Also one of the old monorails, the um, like garden themed one with the flowers all over it. Anyway, we're coming around into uh, Forbidden Valley now. However, Nemesis is currently broken down and Galactica is advertising a 100 minute queue. So we're gonna have kind of like a walk past them. However, as you can hear, there's no roar of BNN down here, which is it's a weird thing. Uh, but as we approach past the gun, it's uh, quietened off quite a lot around here. But yeah, we'll have a little mooch around here to see what's what. And then I think we're going to head through the gardens um, up towards Dark Forest. So Nemesis must be down for a prolonged time because they're actually empty in the queue now. So no chance of that coming up anytime soon. So it's obviously something um, quite serious because there is a train half out the station and it's got people on it but it's not moving and they've just, like I said, chucked out the queue so sadly no roaring shots of Nemi which I wanted and we were going to go on this one. It's a bit of a shame. Right, so we've just come towards um, Galactica from Nemesis and just over the tunnel just now there was just someone announcing that um, Galactica is running a severely reduced capacity um, down to one train which is why it's got a hundred minute queue. Uh, we're just going to have a look. Yeah, one train is socially distanced so uh, yeah I think this normally can have like four or five trains because it has the dual station. Uh, but we're going to have a look down there. I don't think we're going to be riding it. Yeah, we, we had plans on riding at least one of the rides in Forbidden Valley, but both of them are actually, well, one of them's out of action. The other one, it looks like the queue is actually in the forefront. to the side of the game show you can actually see the old rips or ride area where they actually have the old operators booth and uh, the backing for it it's not fenced off or anything you've just got these games here and it's behind here Ripsaw was a great hus top spin which I don't know really why they got rid of um, but yeah it was, it was sorely missed and a great flat ride gone from the park so it's very strange to come into Forbidden Valley and not hear the roar of the B&Ms down here though that was saying that Galactica's now running, but it's running very few and far because it being on one train at the moment. Um, so we're going to leave Forbidden Valley without riding any of the B&M beasts, especially near me, I do love it. We did get on um, Nemesis yesterday and Louise is currently saying I should go on the Blade, which, uh, no, I don't do, I don't do swinging do ships. No way. Do it. Do it. No way. No. I went on Smiler, you do this. Well, you got to come on it with me. There you go. Come on it with me and I'll go on it. Uh, it's uh, at the entrance on the other side. Yeah, that's not going on. <laughs> so yeah, 
blade a few seasons ago, everyone thought it was being totally removed. Um, however, it's uh, still here and it's been fully refurbished. So we've come down into the gardens to have a look at the pagoda. So there's a the cable car over the top and uh, the refurbished pagoda. This was in disrepair a few seasons back. And they spent a couple of years doing it up and now it's finished. Finished last season, I believe. After a nice half an hour or so just chilling in the gardens we are heading over to the dark forest to ride 13 which apparently is on a 20 minute queue at the moment. Um, it's just nice to come into the gardens occasionally. Louise is always the one that pulls me to the gardens. I think if it wasn't for Louise I'd give the gardens much more of a miss and I'd miss out on quite a lot of their beautiful looks. Like there's hidden beauty in these gardens. Um, it's not hidden, it's just your boy. Yeah, and I just, I'm like, I'm like, theme park ride, theme park ride. But yeah, if you get the opportunity to come down into the gardens, it is a long way down and it does take a bit of stamina um, for the unfit, like myself. But it's definitely worth it. The pagoda looks amazing. Like looking down on it from the cable car is impressive. But when you're down at the same level as it, it's just truly majestic. Um, so yeah, as you can probably hear, I am out of breath already from just this slow, gentle incline. Um, but this leads up to the dark forest around the back way and uh, we'll see you over by 13. So we're taking um, the shortcut from the gardens to the dark forest, which I think a lot of people don't realize, but if you, uh, there's the rehydration station in front of the towers. If you turn left, instead of going through the tower archway, it leads around here, where it appears like they're setting up some things for a uh, Scarefest. Bit of a theme building here. Looks like there might be a uh, experience coming around here. Uh, but yeah, this way kind of looks off the beaten track a bit, but you go down here to the end and it brings you out by the hydraulic launch station for um, Rita, so it just brings you in from a different direction. I'm surprised they haven't done this up a bit more and like made another entrance, but to be honest, it doesn't really need it, does it? So here we go at the end of the path now, and it looks like it just dead ends off there. And actually it brings you around the Rita turnaround point and 13 is just down to the left. So yesterday when we came on 13 it was queuing from the entrance and that was a 45 minute queue uh, which was pretty spot on so uh, I don't think it's going to be near 25 minutes because it's not even queuing down in the uh, cattle pens around the corner. Unless everyone's bunched up. Yeah, unless everyone's bunched up, which I must say, at the moment, Alton Tower seems to be doing an amazing job with the social distancing. Um, but this was a nice ride to come on yesterday because it was so blistering hot. Um, it was just nice to get out of the direct sunlight. And I was saying to Louise how they used to have the mannequins all being consumed by the forest, but they've since removed a lot of them could use with some theming out here to be honest, it is quite barren. Um, but they've still got the Orton Towers van, uh, which has been overtaken by the roots, which a lot of people miss now because it's kind of got a bit too overgrown, they need to trim it back a bit. because of the drop section. So in the back rows they've got some sand filled dummies um, just to make that weight up. So they're going to get front row. Front row though. <laughs> We've just 
just come off of a very quick ride on 13 there, barely waited 10 minutes for that. Front row as you saw, um, I do like that one, like, it is giving a lot of stick but I think it's only given a lot of stick because it was a secret weapon and I don't think it quite lives up to secret weapon stat uh, status. Um, like obviously you've got like, the likes of Smiler, Wicker Man, Nemesis, you know, to live up to and it's just, it's a bit too family, you know, they could have done a lot more of it in my opinion. Um, anyway, we're going to take the sky ride now back to the main entrance and we're going to head over to Springboard Wizard, which we haven't been on this season no. at all. Um, so after that, we're probably going to look at maybe leaving it. It's coming up to five o'clock now. Um, we'll have a look around the Oktoberfest, give you a show of what's there and I'll show you some of the merchants for sale. So we'll see you on the sky ride. So sadly, the uh, sky ride is shut, which means we have to walk. More exercise. More exercise. Okay. Uh, but we'll do Spinball Wizard, then we'll nip to the Oktoberfest to show you what is available there, and then we're probably going to call it. Go but uh, to, the, to the operator outside of the sky ride, I didn't catch your name actually. You said your old channel was called Theme Park Circle. Hi, it was nice to see you. Maybe I made that up, maybe it's James. Possibly. Um, but yeah, it was nice to meet you, and uh, yeah, hopefully you're checking the channel out and uh, watching this video. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be walking down the front of the park now. Uh, crowd levels are dropping off now. It is, like I say, it's coming up to five o'clock, so last hour of operations. Um, and to be honest, it's not been very busy, so I imagine a lot of people call it early because they're done. Um, do you want to do Hex while we're down here? Yeah, let's do it. So we're going to jump on Hex while we're going past. It's spare at the moment uh, on the Legend of the Towers. This opened back in 2000 of Acoma Madhouse. Um, I do love this one. It's, it's the first one, no, sorry, second one in the UK. The first one being at Drayton Manor, which we are doing on this trip. I don't think their one is open, the haunting. Uh, but yeah, I can't film on this one, unfortunately, guys. So I'm going to have to put you away. We'll see you when we get off of Hex, the Legend of the Towers. Right, so we've just come off of our like spur at the moment ride on Hex. There was only, well, including us, four people, two other people, so. Four there was people a very to... rude man not getting a star from his death. Oh. So there was an, an operator in very the. Rude. The operator at the entrance of the ride basically was not letting anyone take pictures in the queue line. Um, well, he wasn't even taking a picture and he was like, delete those files! Uh, like, so, so, so there was a guy in front taking a picture in the queue line, he asked him, him to delete that and then we, I was just on my phone and he was like, can you delete the picture? So I had to show him my camera, on my, on my camera phone and I was like, I didn't actually take a picture. Um, but yeah, it was, it was just one of those moments of it was like, you can There's film in the queue, but obviously, well. you know, one operator says goes, so you just got to kind of agree with it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we're going to go down to Spinball Wizard now, and um, that'll probably be the last ride of the day before we have a look Do at you know Oktoberfest. <laughs> You're getting a bit crazy, aren't you? <laughs> I'm so like. It's delirious. a long day. It's really quiet now, so like I say, we'll probably only be here to about half five at this rate. Uh, the time now is five o'clock on the nose. Oktoberfest for Luke, big coaster of the day. <laughs> So it's time for the last ride of the day, the ride that will surely Optinauts. make me nauseous. Um, oh, I said that really, well, I said that really strangely. No. Uh, so yeah, the, the thing is with this, because of social distancing, they're loading you in groups, so the two of us will be on one side of the guess. Oh, maybe. Right, anyway, yeah. we're going to get in the queue for this. It's got 10 minutes, but I actually think it's probably going to be a walk-on because there's no queue up there. Um, so we're just going to head on to the Spinball Wizard. final ride of the day now it's coming up to about 20 past five now and a trick for you guys if you're coming on this during times of social yeah. distancing uh, if you're in a two like us your best bet is to sit back to back in opposite corners they don't let you go with another group of two like yeah. they're not balanced anymore 
And if you if you sit on the same side, we did this on Dragon's Fury, it spins like so fast, Crazy. it's just not nice. So yeah, by sitting in opposite corners on opposite sides, it just balances the spin out of it. It was fine, we've always made that ride, but like the thing is it's quite a violent ride anyway, because it wants you to spin. So if you sit on one side it just makes it really sick, like it makes you really sick. Um, but I came, I came off that fine and that was that was quite enjoyable other than the fact it was rough. Uh, anyway, before we leave, we're going to head over to the Oktoberfest area just to show you what's going on uh, and what they're doing for Oktoberfest. Right, so we're coming into the Oktoberfest uh, festival area. They've got live music here. You can get yourself your alcohol and uh, they've got their live Oompa band out at the moment, which we'll go have a closer look at and then we will go see what they're over there are offering over there and uh, we'll also give a review of some of the food that we've already tried and the merch. So we just sat down and watched a little bit of the Umpa band who have just finished their set there back in an hour. Like I, I said, I was loving my life, wasn't I? Like they, they did some, uh, they do like popular culture songs in the Umpa band style. So, anyway, we're coming round towards where all the stalls are. I get the impression they maybe had bigger plans for this originally, but obviously, coronavirus has stopped it, you know. Um, so, anyway, we've got um, some uh, pretzel stand here, which uh, we got one yesterday. Uh, it was £3 for a pretzel. It, it wasn't anything too amazing. There's no annual pass discount on the food here, but the merch there is. So you've got the pretzel stand and then you've got some uh, chips and all that by the looks of it. Poms, uh, toasted marshmallows, but there's, there's, there's no one there. Unless you get your marshmallow over there and bring it over. Oh, right, yeah, so you can see from here you get your marshmallow and then you take it over and toast it. Uh, just for those who are interested, that's what's available. So there is some pretty cool merch, um, however we won't be making a purchase because we're uh, trying to budget for this trip a little bit and uh, we don't want to splurge all our money in one go. So we've got a selection of steins, these are a five each. You can get annual pass discount on these as well, which is pretty cool. There's the prices for those interested, even a little pin. And then on the clothes side of things, they've got this hoodie which Louise really likes, which well, is back here. You're not allowed to touch, Luke. Oh. So yeah, there's the merch available. Not a massive amount, but you can only get the merch um, from that store there. You can't get it in the main shop. So if you want any merch, it's here, which is uh, just for your reference, the stage is over there. Uh, and the final few stalls, you've got the beer, uh, beer cellar, which does, does your beers, beer and the Bratverse stall, which does Bratverse, which are overpriced, but super nice. So there's plenty of space, they've got loads of seating, and uh, plenty of space for people to just sit down and relax, uh, which I like. And I do love their stand over here, um, this giant Oktoberfest, like, inflatable. Um, I want that in my house. It is pretty cool. Even in my house, my God. Yeah, I was just about to say, you can have a pretty big house to fit that. Uh, including these pretzels on the side, which just kind of like strap onto okay, it. I'll go for just the pretzel then, I won't be greedy. Okay, so uh, yeah, and they're also controlling where the alcohol is, so they don't want alcohol out of the designated areas, them being the uh, October Festival ground here and Mutiny Bay. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a pretty cool thing. If you get a chance to come down here, um, I think this is running from, well, obviously now being September, up to uh, Scarefest. Uh, this video is probably being uploaded a bit later because we're on our mega trip at the moment. But yeah, give it a go. Right, so we're going to leave it there, guys. Um, had a really great day as always, and I am very impressed with how Alton Towers have improved on their social distancing. Not that it was bad in the first place, um, but it's just nice That's to see that they're taking feedback. Be, yes. Just taking feedback, mm -hmm. feedback and actually and it Definitely. But yeah, had a very good day. It's not been overly busy, which is, has helped. So that's why we come in September for the quiet times. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and um, be sure to leave a like if you did. Don't forget to subscribe. We're posting content weekly from this mega trip. So uh, hit that subscribe button and bell notifications for um, all notifications on videos to come. Anyway, we're going to leave the video here, guys. So we'll see you in the next video, whatever you choose to make. Until then, bye. bye.